Hi, I'm Nicole Kupchik and this is 10 Minute Tidbits. I'm here today with Barbara McLean who is an amazing clinical nurse specialist who works at Grady Health System in Atlanta, Georgia. And today we're going to talk about base excess and deficit and how you would use that number in resuscitating patients. So hello Barbara. Hello Nicole. It's so good to be with you. I'm really happy to be with all of you today. And, and just I'm as an FYI, we're here in um, San Antonio, Texas at the Society of Critical Care Medicine Conference. Yes. And so Barbara, can you just just line us up? What What is this whole thing about base, excess, and deficit? What, what does this mean on our blood gas when we see this number? It's a minus or it's a positive. So tell us what this all means. Well, I, I really appreciate that. And in a 10 minute tidbit, I'm gonna do the very best I can. So when we look at our arterial blood gas, when we look at a venous blood gas, it doesn't matter. Okay, you arterial get the, or you, venous. Arterial or venous, okay, if, you, love it. if you've actually done it as a blood gas, okay. not just through the chemistry lab. And you get this reflection of base, um, base, which is normally zero, plus two to minus two. So you've got a range of four, minus two to plus two. What base is actually reflecting is the presence or absence of metabolic acids. So just, I always like to remind people, it's sort of like, marriage, right? Base marries metabolic acid, which is hydrogen ion, and when they couple together, they make something completely different. So when we look at base deficit, what that means is you've had a high presence of metabolic acid that now is conjugating or marrying that base. When we look at the base deficit, that reflects to us a high level of metabolic acid. Now there's a lot of causes of metabolic acidosis. And, and it's not singular, it's not just tissue hypoperfusion. It can be ketosis, it can be acute renal failure. There are a lot of different causes yeah. of base deficit. But in the aspect of aggressive resuscitation, as we're resuscitating patients and we're using different therapeutic interventions to try to normalize their perfusion, so make sure you appreciate perfusion, not pressure, perfusion, that as we're trying to normalize the perfusion, this is a great endpoint. It's very rapidly changing and it very rapidly in the moment indicates what's occurring. So unlike some of our other measures which take more time for presence and clearance, base is reflective in the moment. And oh, that's okay. That's good to know. It's a yeah. really... And, and Tells you here I, and now what's I, happening. And I'm always, again, it's not specific. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps that's why it hasn't yeah. been fully embraced. But lactate also is not specific. No. And that's been fully yeah. embraced. So We're really asking a lot of questions now about lactate. Yes, and we should be because there's over 400 causes of elevated lactate. So, but... I don't want to mess you up. It's all right. If you're looking at lactate, that's great. Now you're going to look at lactate and base because base is going to be much more reflective in the moment. So one of the things I, I talk a lot about is recognizing that you have a base deficit, being able to speak to that and being able to understand the processes that patients may have with the base deficit what, and, and, and correlating that, of course, back to the pH and recognizing pH is a symptom of a problem. Our responsibility, because we're investigators, is we're gonna investigate what the problem is so that we can guide our physician colleagues to actually employ different methodologies to try to improve the outcome of our patient by neutralizing uh, their acidosis. And the best way for us, the number one way, is by trying to achieve adequate perfusion, which is a tricky business. Yeah, and so it, I think it's challenging, and I don't think a lot of us were taught in nursing school how to use this number. So basically, uh, what you want to do when you're resuscitating, because you were assuming that if you've got somebody who's hemorrhaging or who's septic, they're probably going to have a base deficit in most cases. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Or, yes, okay. unless you've given a lot of bicarb. Which, which in the moment will give them a base excess, but eventually will cause a worsening deficit. Yeah, and I always jokingly say the 1990s called and they want their bicarb back. <laughs> Not in all cases, but in a lot of That's cases. Good. That's so, good. That's anyway, good. So, um, so anyway, so if you've got somebody who's, they're, they're probably going to have a deficit. The number's going to be negative on the blood gas. Mm -hmm. What is their goal? Is their goal to like to look at, like, is it a certain number they target or a trend? Or what, what would be the goal for a nurse at the bedside who's resuscitating patient? 
I think that one of the most important things for a nurse at the bedside is to really understand what it is they're trying to resuscitate and to appreciate that the patient may be ketotic and, and hyperlactatemic okay. and yeah. hypoperfused. So you're resuscitating, you're resuscitating their relative or absolute insulin deficiency or insulin resistance with the insulin. You're resuscitating with fluid to resuscitate their dehydrated state. And then you, you're looking at uh, the decrease in the production of ketones. So your patient has a combination of ketoacidosis and lactic yeah. acidosis. And you're not going to be able to cure that with just volume resuscitation. You've got to look at other things. So I think always having a plan. First of all, the plan always depends, no matter what anybody says, the plan always depends on you appreciating what the problem is. And that's the most important issue is I'm trying to appreciate the problem. Is this patient purely hypoperfused, then I'm going after perfusion. Is this patient unable to maintain vascular tone, then I might go after pressure. But at the end point, because so much of our resuscitation actually, in the end, makes the patient much worse, I think it yeah, really clearly sure. speaks to being able to bring something that in the moment is going to reflect what you're doing. That your goal is to make the base, if the base is in deficit, to make that base less negative, not by uh, artificial um, alliances like with BICAR, but with okay. actually true therapeutic intervention if possible. So again, we, we, we use it. Um, I would tell you that probably the place that has the most history of using base deficit, just like the practice that has the most history using lactate, would be trauma surgery. Trauma surgery yeah, they're been very using used to this number. base deficit and lactate for, for 40 years. Yeah. It was part of the original ACS guidelines in traumatic resuscitation. And now we've embraced lactate and now it's time to embrace base deficit because the base deficit uh, really gives you that moment to moment mm -hmm. reflection of whether or not you've resuscitated the patient. So if they, if uh, let's say they get um, a patient who's hemorrhaging or who's septic, does a base deficit say I need fluid or does it say I need better perfusion? Or does it say something else? Well, I think if you have, if you have a base deficit, um, your perspective would be, the first perspective you would have is I'm going to evaluate my base deficit. I'm going to look at glucose to see if I okay, think so it's DKA, ketotic, yeah, right? Okay. Because it might be in DK. So I'm going to look at your glucose. I'm going to look at your chloride. I'm going to I'm going to look at your creatinine. So I'm going to rule those in or out in terms of my resuscitation. So if my creatinine is six, I have acidosis from renal failure. Okay. I I needed perfusion. I didn't get it. Now I'm going to be a little cautious about volume resuscitation. So I would never say if you've got a base deficit, give volume resuscitation. Okay. If you have a base deficit, you either have an organ dysfunction or you have a process. Both of those are actually best treated by managing perfusion. So I, perfusion, remember, is not just about volume, it's not about vascular tone, and it's not just about vascular efficiency. It's about all three. And it's about capillary integrity. And a lot of things that we can't discover easily at the bedside. So we come in on our shift, we look at that patient, we look at their heart rate, we look, if we can, we look at their stroke volume. But most importantly for me, I'm looking at your base. You've got a base deficit, I want to know why. And if okay. you've got a base deficit, but you have a normal pH, then I know that you're working hard to breathe to compensate. And so I might have a patient who I'm looking at initially, and they're breathing 32 times a minute, and they're their arterial CO2 is 25, I'm like, okay, this is compensatory in yeah. general, not always, but in general. I see that the pH is 7.36, which is on the acid side, and that patient is compensating for a very significant metabolic acidosis, which then okay. is reflected to me by the base deficit. So, so it is more kind of a, a, a better direct indicator then, than the pH or bicarb or anything else on your gas. I think that I think that bicarb and base are very important. I think okay. that again, I would never want someone I never want people to be limited by what they can or cannot do in their institution. If your blood gas reports bicarb, then you're going to use bicarb. Yeah. Same thing is going to happen. Bicarb goes down because the bicarb marries the acid. That means the bicarbon circulation has gone down. So as long as you're sure that that's the, pri the problem, that means that the pH will be less than perfect. It can't be on the alkaline side. 
pH is less than perfect, bicarb is down, you're going to use that in the same way. Don't be limited by what your lab gives you. Understand bicarb, understand that base is a calculation that utilizes bicarb that is meant to tell us about all the circulating buffers. And I mean, there's multiple levels of things we could talk about, but these, these are the simple tools for us at the bedside. So base you know, if it's a negative number, that's a deficit. And when you're resuscitating patients, you want to watch that number closely and make sure, you know, that it's coming closer to zero. Yeah, um, or the way I would always say it, it's becoming like, less negative. So the, the more negative it is, the more acidosis you have. Love it. The less negative it is, the better you're resuscitating or, or managing your patient and the better the patient is going to become. Yeah, so I love that. Okay, all right, and we, Barbara always sings a song. Just so you guys know, if you know Barbara, she always sings, and your song about this one is... Well, I have two songs, really. It's all but about my first the bass, about the bass, no trouble. It's all, all about, about the, the bass, bass, about the bass, stroke volume. It's all about the bass, about the bass, oh baby. That's all I've got. But don't you love it? I love it. So um, this is Nicole Kupchik, and I've had the pleasure of being here with Barbara McLean, and this is 10-Minute Tidbits.